Yo, what's up YouTube family? It's your boy Kuzi back at you with another hot TikTok reaction video. Today we're gonna be reacting to some strange and bizarre TikTok reactions. I'm talking about the kind that's gonna have you questioning reality. With that said, if you're new to the channel, go ahead, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I drop some new hot content that you definitely don't wanna miss. One more thing, these videos are for entertainment purposes only. Don't believe anything that you hear or see in these videos. Don't believe anything that I say in these videos. Always use your own discernment, always do your own research. Let's get right to it. Man, that's massive. They basically saying that it has its own ecosystem in it. That's wild, man. How many of y'all have heard of the Sung Dong Cave? Let me know in the comment section down below. Most disturbing websites in the world. This picture contains a list of disturbing websites from the least scary to the most. View at your own risk. Today we're gonna to be starting from tier four since the other ones I posted got removed. The first website is theblackvault.com. This website contains two million unreleased documents from the government. The creepiest part about it is there's an entire section dedicated to the supernatural. For example, while I was browsing, I found an article related to skinwalkers. And many people who posted this photo mysteriously had their post taken down. Another website is called Kekma.net. You guys didn't trust me last time, but do not look this up. I'm only talking about this one because it's on the list. Make sure to like and follow for tier five tomorrow because tomorrow is where it gets real. Say, man, if I was y'all, would definitely not try to go to any of those sites, man. That's just me, though. The Soul Catcher is the, what we, I think, is the uh, six mile high uh, tower in the middle of Sinus Medi, right in the middle of the uh, center of the moon, if you look at the moon, and uh, the famous photo that Richard found, uh, Lunar Orbiter 384M, shows that huge tower, and he also has two other photographs that, uh, that show that tower. Uh, I think that tower is um, what I call the Soul Catcher when you uh, die your soul is the ghost of the soul catcher there are several uh, soul uh, transmission stations both on earth and on the moon and depending on where you're going in your next lifetime uh, is which transmission station uh, takes over what y'all think about that y'all believe that me I don't know about all that man Absolutely every single human being on the face of this planet gets abducted. Most of them do not remember. Most of the stories you hear about the bad aliens and the Dracos and the reptilians, it's all for confusion. They don't want us to figure it out. What's your take on disclosure? Emery, listen to me closely. Mm, mm, mm. How could they do us that way? Allegedly, the female draconians realized they were more powerful than their male counterparts because they were actually running the colonies and they began asking why they were not in charge. In turn, they revolted and replaced the draconian king with a queen, also killing many important male figures and installing a system ruled by the draconian females. Guess we learn something new every day. Dreams, baby, get you a me. It's time to boss up. Fix your credit, girl. Get at it. Get your bag up. How many of y'all in the United States bleed that? Hmm, something to look into, huh? I know that's right.
how many of y'all heard of the Galactic Federation? Y'all believe that's true? Like, that's possible? Like, that's real? Like, it's possible that that's real? And uh, the thing with the reptilians like that, man, I heard, you know, in another video that they come through portals, like through, you know, your closet doors or, you know what I'm saying, your garage door, your basement doors, you know what I'm saying, maybe your attic, maybe from under your bed, you never know. You ever heard of Monsters, Inc.? Let's go, let's go. Let me know what y'all think. Come on, man. It's just a theory. Okay, here's a quick lesson so that you don't make the mistake that these people are about to make. That is an Asian water monitor lizard. If you ever encounter one of these, you need to be able to read its body language and mannerisms. And what it's about to do, right here. This is how a lizard says, look at my hat. Wow, this is fucking ridiculous. All it wants you to do at this point is compliment its hat. And you'll notice these people don't do it. And it does just swim away, but it will remember this. And now it's going to go off and try to find somebody with taste. Mm, mm, mm. This has left the internet speechless. that be the eye of something or could that be some people from an ancient civilization that went inside that mountain or went you know what i'm saying it could that be a doorway basically could that be a door it's all i'm getting at y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section getting pinged. This is what caught my eye. Man, look at those, look at those lakes. Look familiar, don't they? That's right. Mm, it's just the rest of my family's in the Finger Lakes right now. I'm supposed to be in the Finger Lakes right now. I told them I was on a hike, snuck away to do this interview. I gotta get back pretty soon, don't worry. People disappear in the finger likes. People disappear in the finger likes. People go missing by finger likes, which Hunter Biden coincidentally has a tattoo of on his back. The coincidence? I don't think so. In the mountains of Buseji, the Yalamitsa Monastery is also reputed to guard the entrance to a tunnel. Some myths allude that it leads towards the center of the earth. The passage could equally be the refuge of a monster that would be unfortunate to come across. The church could have constructed this monastery to protect access to it, because for some, it would be the entrance to hell. What y'all think about that? This couple was hiking on a mountain, but then they found this. And that's definitely man-made. Let me know what y'all think, though. Is it possible that reports of reptilians at Sondong Cave are encounters with beings from inner Earth? While it may sound too incredible to be true, there have been reports that during the Vietnam War in the 1970s, U.S. soldiers encountered what they described as upright lizards inhabiting caves. And accounts of reptilian beings existing in underground caverns can be found all across the globe, even on the other side of the world, in Cusco, Peru. Mm. Okay. This incredible subterranean realm called the Songdung Cave is estimated to be roughly three million years old. It runs through the earth for nearly six miles, and numerous areas where the cave ceiling has collapsed allow sunlight to enter, resulting in the growth of trees and other vegetation. But according to area residents, what's most notable about Songdung Cave are the strange creatures that are believed to dwell within it. 
local residents described seeing reptilian type humanoid beings emerging from the Songdong cave and they believe that they actually live deep inside this cave. What's fascinating about this is that these reptilian type humanoid beings are similar to the seraphim or the winged serpents in Kabbalistic tradition. The seraphim are said to have gone and lived in the inner earth according to Kabbalistic teaching. Is it possible that reports of reptilians at Sondong Cave are encounters with beings from inner earth. While it may sound too incredible to be true, there have been reports that during the Vietnam War in the 1970s, U.S. soldiers encountered what they described as upright lizards inhabiting caves. And accounts of reptilian beings existing in underground caverns can be found all across the globe. Say, man, y'all think that's true? Y'all think it's some reptilians down there, man, in the in the Vietnam, in the Nam? Is that why we really lost the war? Or did we not lose it? I ain't gonna say we lost it, because I don't know, man. But they say it was a draw. I don't know, man. They say, man, a lot of state, they a lot of say so, man. But y'all let me know what y'all think about that, man. Because uh, if it is, man, ooh -wee. Let me know what y'all think, man. Y'all think that's some CGI, Photoshop, uh, you know, what's going on with that? You yeah, let me know. Me, that, mm, I don't know. No, I'm playing. I don't know. They look pretty real to me, except for the, the last ones, though. But you never know. And these days and time. The Denver airport is giving suspicious as shit all the way around, but it's not the being over budget by millions of dollars or the underground tunnels that lead to NORAD, possibly. It's this right here. This time capsule that is to be opened in 2094 by Denver, Colorado residents is giving suspicious as shit all the way around. Let's talk about it. First and foremost, this is a symbol of Freemasonry. And if you don't know what a Freemason is, please let me know in the comments. I'll do a whole video about them. Long story short though, the Freemasons are a secret society that have been contributed to a new world order. Time capsule with Freemasonry symbolism on it is dedicated to the New World Airport Commission. That doesn't exist. The Denver International Airport explained this by saying that Freemasons laid the stone. That's what they do. But they can't explain why the New World Airport Commission doesn't exist and this stone is dedicated to it. They really can't explain why throughout the rest of the Denver International Airport all of the stonework is ominous as shit. There are stone gargoyles that watch over you as you pick up your baggage. And this is a talking gargoyle named Sam. So... Hmm interesting 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 y'all let me know what y'all think about that clip man which i want man y'all i think that's a good topic man y'all want either that or, or or noah man that's the both of those are pretty good topics man for a video most definitely y'all let me know in the comment section of course down below California is now considering a bill that would send children as young as 12 years old to group homes without the parents' permission. This will affect every single parent in the state of California. I'll give you an example like this. Your 12-year-old has TikTok, your 12-year-old has a cell phone and social media, and you're not comfortable with the way that he or she is using that social media. You get in a huge fight, you take the phone away, you ground them for a week or two, and they go to school. Well, now the state has inserted these professional individuals, professional people on to public school campuses and now your child is having a hard day the teacher notices and recommends that they go get a counseling session when they're at that session they divulge they share with this adult who they believe is a trusted adult who's taking care of them and they share they had a total terrible blowout fight with that uh you and your husband or your partner they don't want to go home they don't feel comfortable talking to you and the professional person asks them if they want to go maybe cool off a couple of days and that and that somewhere off campus and outside of the home and your child says yes my only children who have been found to be the victims of incest child abuse or a serious risk of harm to themselves or others can be removed from the home without their parents knowledge and consent if ab665 passes the way that wendy carrillo and senator scott wiener want it to pass a 12 year old who's deemed mature enough by the professional person can not only receive the mental health treatment but can opt themselves out of their home into a residential facility and the parent would never know 
Man, do y'all hear what she's saying, man? Them people is wicked. Wicked, wicked, wicked. If y'all can't tell, man. If y'all can't tell, man, that man is in charge of what they call their chief, man. You know, they God. But, hey, y'all got to realize this, man, for sure. For sure. Y'all ever heard the saying, they may look like us, but they ain't us. Man, those people are demonic forces of evil, man. For sure, for sure, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that clip. And I hope ain't nobody in my comment section riding with that blue cone, man. Let's go, man. And if y'all liking the video so far, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and not hit the notification bell so you be notified whenever I drop some new fire content in the future, man. Was everything we learned in school a lie? If I had to guess, that those would be the four horsemen of the apocalypse. They definitely look like people on a horse. Okay, we got some kind of weird goat, horse, bison looking animal. Whoa. That horse has wings. Is that a Pegasus? And a deceased dragon. If this is fake, this is really, really good. That's a creature I don't even recognize. A group of Pegasus? There we y'all, this is just an Hey, I ain't gonna lie, them first few, first couple of men didn't look too real. Maybe that second one looked alright, you know, like it may be real a little bit. I don't know, cause it look it may be some type of goat or something like that, but uh I don't know man. With this goat man, how they be doing all this gene splicing and stuff and all this Nephilim tech, man, y'all ain't no telling what they didn't cut, you know. Ain't no telling what they didn't uh Conjured up, man, by now. Shit. Y'all let me know what y'all think, though, in the comment section. Y'all think that's real? Them things real or what, man? The moon is a spaceship. It was built on Jupiter about 38 million years ago. And between the time it was built and 15,000 years ago, it's been touring around our solar system. Our solar system, uh, we're told by NASA there's nine planets. There's actually 40. There's the Earth plus 39. And each of those planets has a civilization. And each of those planets has moons that have civilizations. There's so much going on out there that, you know, we could not possibly grasp how much is going on in our solar system. There's so much air traffic control. It's, it's fantastic. The, right. the amount of trade that goes on both technologically and uh, and sociologically uh, it, it's just amazing all the stuff that's going on so it was made on uh, Jupiter by who by what race by I don't know just race. a zombie race yeah and uh, it's been towed around to the different moons doing exactly what it's doing now and that is monitoring whoever lives on there and abducting or doing whatever it is they they would like to do now it doesn't have its own propulsion it has to be towed and uh, the, our moon was towed into its orbit now about fifteen thousand years ago just uh, after the ice age uh, the last ice age and when man first uh, became uh, aware of the moon uh, there was or aware of the skies there was no moon and then there was uh, two moons and then there was one moon and uh, we think that uh, the two moons was the vehicle that towed our moon uh, into space uh, there's a guy named Norman Bergeron who's passed away now um, very knowledgeable had so many degrees and works with so many of our aerospace co uh, companies doing different things. He lived in La he lived in Los Altos Hills, which was south of San Francisco, and worked at Lockheed. Uh, retired in uh, 1986, and got a hold of some of the Voyager photos of Saturn's rings, and he wrote the ring makers of Saturn. Right. Is that about the fuel the fuel coming out and the rings? 
Yeah, yeah. The, the spaceship. The spaceship, yeah. There's three of them that he saw, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the biggest is 30,000 miles long and 2,400 miles in diameter. Anyway, I thought it'd be really nice to meet this guy, and I wrote him, and I just happened to be going to the UFO conference in San Jose in 2005, and I went by his house, met him, and we became friends, uh, very good friends over the years. Unfortunately, he passed away a couple of years ago, but in the back part of the Ringmakers of Saturn, he discussed how the moon was towed into its orbit and his proof. When I say false too, like I say, man, like I always say, I'm going to say this, man. Don't fall for the boo-boo, man, because shit, how the moon going to be all this and that, a ship and all that and a rock, man, when it's a luminary. If you don't know what the definition of a luminary is, look it up, man. It's a light, man. It's just a light source, man. Just... Just answer that for me, y'all. Let me know what y'all think about that in the comment section. That's just like saying the, the world is flat. I mean, not flat, round, because we all know the world is flat, right? Okay, okay, yeah, let's go. This woman opened a portal and got it all on camera. Check it out. It said that this girl went missing back in 2001 after recording this video where she placed two mirrors together and something really strange happened. Something really strange going on here? And if something ends up happening to me, I just hope that this video can be explained. Okay, so I have these two mirrors in my room. As you can see, they're pretty normal looking mirrors. But I was cleaning and I had them kind of set up like this. And I noticed something really weird. Just watch. See, when you look through the mirror into the other one, it becomes like a window. I don't know if people know this or not, but facing two mirrors together is something you just shouldn't do. And it's said to open portals or bring in really bad energies or spirits. Sometimes good, but usually bad. And there's this huge warehouse grocery store or something down there. But wait, it gets even crazier. Watch this. Just playing with y'all. <laughs> uh, Three, two, one. Oh, I do. I thought she was gonna get sucked in. People. I thought she was gonna get sucked in there, y'all. That's why I did that, man. Y'all, I'm just bull. I'm just playing around. I'm just playing she entered the back rooms, and she's an SPC now. Well, what is this place? Hello? 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 How far does it go? What y'all think about that clip? Y'all think that's really? Y'all think it's cap? Let me know, man. That's hey man i think it's part of a movie or something to me personally bob told us that they were going to test the alien craft mm -hmm. that night bob's job was to back engineer to see if we could get that technology but we didn't have it yet well you can mention who's with you john uh, we have bob lazar who is a uh, theoretical physicist who works at crew Light. <laughs> and is also a dead man at this point. Okay. Good luck. No one, did you see that move it did? No, I didn't. It was like I kept doing boom, boom. Well, no. Told me in detail how the antimatter reactor worked. This is the antimatter reactor, and this is where it sits in the middle of the craft. Now, this is the craft, mm -hmm. and the lowering spot is where the antimatter reactor is. These are the gravity amplifiers. They shoot protons into the 115, which bumps it up to 116, 116 right. which shows off antimatter, which is mixed with matter, and through a thermionic generator creates voltage out of heat. They are able to grasp the gravity A wave, which is available 
as the 116 is going back to 115, and they're able to take it up to the center of the craft and down through the sides and into the gravity amplifiers and focus on a point in space and then increase the attractiveness of the amplifiers, increase the amplification mm -hmm. uh, that pulls that space towards the craft. It wraps around the craft and then they turn it off and, and they're instantly hundreds of thousands of miles away. This shows pulling it uh, towards you with the gravity amplifiers and wrapping it around the craft like that. Then you snap back, you don't actually snap back, you are back. This is an exact replica of a uh, antimatter reactor that runs the ET craft. This half sphere uh, comes off like this. Mm -hmm. And inside, uh, we have a little container with a cap on it. Now the cap comes off and in it, we have the 115. Mm -hmm. Now the 115, we were given 500 pounds of it by ET. Some of it they made into these little uh, triangles for right. fuel. Mm -hmm. So what happens is this is the little tube that they shoot protons out, which hits the 115 at the very tip like that. Right. The 115 creates 116, mm -hmm. which instantaneously decays and throws off antimatter and access to the gravity A wave. In my opinion, no, it'll never come out. The basic uh, agreement between our government and ET is we get that advanced technology. We have to have their help in covering it up. If they have to lie or make stuff up, the deal is you can have the technology, you have to keep our existence a secret. Mm, and why is that? What agenda do they have for that? Why are because they, they are the ones that made us. They dreamed us up. They engineered us. They built us. They put us down on Earth. Like hundreds of Earths just like this. Right. And they use the same story to bring people together and understand um, that what they're trying to create is uh, the humans, when they first become humans, to learn how to live with integrity, without envy, without hate, without greed, and to learn to express our love to our families each and every day. That's all we're here for. Are they worried about us destroying the planet? No, they take great care to be sure that we're not only can we not destroy the planet, there's no chance of an asteroid ever uh, hitting the planet. We're not the only one. It just takes a long time from when a human is born uh, with a soul uh, to educate and mature that soul. Man. I don't know, man. How many of y'all believe what he's saying is true? Let me know down below in the comment section right now. And hit that like button, y'all. Get that man, get them likes up. All y'all in here watching this, man, and y'all ain't hitting that like button, man. What they say, you watching this, you ain't hit that like button, you're still in. Hit that like button and comment, man. It don't matter what you say, man. Just comment. You can say what's up, just comment anything, man, to help the algorithm, help the video, uh, help them push the video out there to more viewers that might want to watch the video. Obviously, you like it, you still here. Let's go. That, sir. Okay. I'm a Christian, sir. I'm pure and virtuous and wholesome and innocent. How can you say anything about it about me? Sir, you need to be born again. Is I that, am born again. Is that, now, did you just say that you are Lucifer? I am Lucifer. Okay, define Lucifer for me. Pure, virtuous, wholesome, innocent individual that's out to help people. Lucifer is? Yeah. Luc say that again. Lucifer is a pure, holy... Virtuous. Virtuous. Now, see the Lucifer that God created? That's the same one. Oh, man, this is great. I'm going to put this on the Internet. Oh, Amen. God bless you, Amen. brother. Because that's exactly what the Shriners and Masons teach, is that Lucifer, Lucifer is light. No. And you're, hey, what you're about confirming those hospitals? They, they, they you know what, sir? <clears throat> Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did not we did not do these good deeds in your name. And you'll say, away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Jesus said it? In Matthew chapter 5. Mercy. No. That's hard to believe. So, you're a Christian and you don't know that. Actually. No, I really am. You are. Because that, I'm pure and virtuous. You're pure and virtuous, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're perfect without Jesus, right? No, 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 no. Okay, tell me about Jesus. Who is Jesus? Oh. 
Right. He's, he's my leader. Is he the son of God? Yes, he is. Is he the only worshipful master? Yes. Have you ever been called worshipful master? No, because I, I've just been too busy. I've been working. Working. Been working to help people. What like kind you. of work? Okay. Get out of here. <clears throat> See, this is what a mason confesses, is that Lucifer is light. Well, it's a sad world, sick world, too. Yeah, Wicked. this is the kind of stuff I could not make up, okay? The Pinder is the head of the Cabal. That's the name of the top person in the 13 bloodlines. And that's what we're now calling Illuminati, would be these 13 bloodlines, the houses. What does Pinder actually mean? It's pretty weird. It means the pinnacle of the Draco, i.e. the number one representative on Earth of the Draco. It also means the penis of the dragon. Now, please, Foot, don't go doing that again. The current Pinder, the leader of the Illuminati, now we're being told, is the Rothschild family. So we don't need to look any farther than that. The only guys above the Rothschilds here on Earth would be these old ones and the family masters and the trustees. But then the Pinder, of course, is the Rothschild. So that's why that name is so prominent. Now, here's the funny thing. The good guy ETs have come back recently... And I don't know why we got a little... Oh, that went away. Good. We had a little feedback. They have been betrayed by the Draco. This just happened in, in the last month. The Draco have been cornered, and there's something that's been created around our solar system called the barrier. And all the Draco that are inside our solar system cannot get out. And they are afraid of whatever this arrest scenario is going to be, because they will be held on trial as responsible for these crimes against humanity that they've perpetrated. They do not want this to happen, and they tried to strike a deal with the positive being, saying, if you let us go, we will offer everybody below our own royal caste in surrender to you to the Alliance. That means the royals are only these 12 to 14 foot tall reptilians. That means they were going to betray the old ones, all of their supplicants who have done this vampire type process to gain immortality. That means all the 13 bloodlines, that means a committee of 300, all the top Illuminati, everybody human. Man, y'all think that's a fact? Or do you think it's fiction? Let me know what you think in the comment section. And y'all run them likes up, man. All y'all in here liking it. All y'all in here liking the video. Obviously, y'all watching, but y'all ain't hitting the like button. Come on, man. Don't be a... Come on, all right. You gonna be one of them, huh? All right. Monitor. Okay. Let's go, man. Forget it. Just forget about it. Look, I know everybody thinks sleeping? everything is a conspiracy, although I told y'all two years ago, I showed y'all the report where the CIA created the term uh, conspiracy theory for critical thinkers. Um, it is just a weaponized term, and it is not a conspiracy that there likely is a clone and clones and skin mask, and Jamie Foxx might be the next one. It's not a conspiracy that these things actually exist. So I'm just going to show you guys the difference between clones and skin masks that are going around because the world is a stage and everything is not what you think it is. Humans made to order. Mothers giving birth to themselves. Babies conceived just so their body parts can be transplanted. Come with me into the scary new world of cloning. The nightmarish stuff of science fiction has suddenly become a reality. Behind those walls, there are people with the technology, the ability, and the desire to genetically engineer human embryos, to be the first in the world to successfully clone a human being. Very pleased to announce that the first baby clone uh, is born. She was born yesterday at 11.55 uh, a.m in the country where she was born. So this will not give you <laughs> more details about the location. She, she's fine, we call her Eve. Colette is a private company. We founded that four years ago, got the funding to really have that uh, last August. And so now we have three scientists working uh, almost full time in a lab here in the United States with the major goal for us to, to produce a human embryo by human cloning. My first gen was born in Jersey. However, I was cloned by Clonate in Canada. My model number is 0112568 if anyone wants to see the registration and cloning. Um, when I was cloned, they wiped a lot of memory, but 
when I stole the documents before escaping, I read that the mother was Puerto Rican and the uh, I guess the father's surrogate, you could say, was a uh, the sperm donor was a Sicilian. <laughs> fish gills or something weird. Wake up now, y'all. Come on. Five. They wrote a whole book about it. Uh, this game plan covers all aspects of our country and would change everyone's lives if enacted. Let's get into the forward of the book to give you a better overall idea of what we're working with. Peep the top of this page. Project 2025 is also known as the 2025 Presidential Transition Project. And again, that is because if they win the White House in November, these are their plans. As a side note, the Heritage Foundation is funding this project. Now, they're a think tank in Washington, D.C., and they're a conservative think tank, so. Our dude Kevin gets into the four promises that Project 2025 is going to focus on. Now, this is after he compares conservatives or the right to valued crusaders protecting America's freedom. The first one is to restore the family as the centerpiece of American life and protect our children. He goes on to say in another page that family is not the centerpiece of American life as of right now because there are so many children born to unwed mothers. On another page, he goes on to say that the solution to this is to overturn Roe v. Wade. The second promise is to dismantle the administrative state. How do they plan to do that? By making government smaller, not as big, not as many people elected to make decisions, just a small few people make the decisions. Number three, defend our nation's sovereignty. How are we going to do that? Stop doing as much foreign dealings and stop big tech. Number four is to secure our blessings of liberty and pursue the good life of family. There's so much more to this project that you need to know. Please go to their website and look it up and read this document as well. But if you don't want to, let me know in the comments and I'll come back with a second part. Man, how many of y'all have heard of Agenda 2025? And how many of y'all heard of Agenda 2030? Hmm, yes, I'm definitely thinking about one of them, you know, one of the same. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that down below in the comment section. It's definitely something to think about, something to make your mind wonder. It's definitely something to do some research up on. To research up on. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. 1991. Longer Hokan discovers a mysterious entrance to a hidden mountain cave obscured by dense jungle overgrowth. The cliffs leading down to the entrance are so steep he cannot explore it further but he notes its location. Nearly two decades later, the British Cave Research Association finally explores the cave. What the team discovers is astounding. It is the largest underground chamber on the planet. It's not just a cave. It's an actual world in Vietnam. Inside this cave, it's 40 stories high. There's actually an ancient forest. It's got flowing water, not just a puddle or a stream, but an actual river. Inside the cave is an entire growing ecosystem. And it's so deep that it looks like it's an entrance to a whole other reality. This incredible subterranean realm called the Songdong Cave is estimated to be roughly three million years old. It runs through the earth for nearly six miles, and numerous areas where the cave ceiling has collapsed allow sunlight to enter, resulting in the growth of trees and other vegetation. But according to area residents, what's most notable about Songdong Cave 
are the strange creatures that are believed to dwell within it. Local residents describe seeing reptilian-type humanoid beings emerging from the Songdong cave, and they believe that they actually live deep inside this cave. What's fascinating about this is that these reptilian-type humanoid beings are similar to the seraphim or the winged serpents in Kabbalistic tradition. The seraphim are said to have gone and lived in the inner earth according to Kabbalistic teaching. Man, it's the reason why we keep hearing about this same cave and the reptilians, man. I believe it's honestly a little truth in there somewhere. We're gonna have to do a little bit more research on this for real. Cause uh, I'm I'm definitely interested now. I don't know about you guys. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that in the comment section for sure, for sure. They will put you on a a record label. They you know. And so you what what do the sacrifices be like? I I wouldn't know, but I thought that would be in the fourteen. I would have read every fourteen page of that letter. No, uh, once you real once you realize there's no need because guess what happens? Somewhere in the middle of that letter, at the bottom, at the top, at the foot page, it's going to have some type of spirituality in it, right? That reads, and you'll be reading it as people do now. Don't even recognize you're reading stuff, and you don't even realize what you're reading, and you're reading spells on yourself. I don't read shit. Unless it's about that cash. Period. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. True little truth I'm there. Going you, I'm, I'm going to show you even more down the line. Okay? Now, this is the this is the other, the new guy now. No, the one that died before her. Look at the other king. Both bow down to the real king. Why? <laughs> Ask yourself why the crown of London come and bow down to the real king. Why? That's both of them there. That's the queen and the king. Both bow down to the real king. Why? They know the truth. There's the difference between me and you and them and us. We on the outside, we see things the way Hollywood make us see it. And the propaganda is so strong to us, we thinking that everything goes the way we see it. Oh, she's the queen, man. Look how they're running stuff. Yeah, yeah, she can do... No. When it comes to these folks, when it comes to these circle, these family, there's hierarchies. They know who to deal with, how to deal with. Selassie is the descendant of the Medicis. The real power. Okay? Selassie is a descendant of the Yahshua The people that bring religion into play Because who still have the publishing of the Bible The Queen From who? King Henry Passing it down To King James So this is where she knows she comes from These people That's why she's following protocol to bow down to real power. <laughs> okay, this is the truth. Now let me show you even more so you understand what you are witness here. Okay, what you are witness here, they are cousins. Selassie and Queen Elizabeth are cousins. When you heard about Mussolini, was going to war with Selassie. It was because they try to retrieve artifacts that still stay intact in Ethiopia. To be exact, they were trying to get the oldest Bible in many. What y'all think about that? Let me know down below in the comment section. Y'all probably be like, man, that's they just showing you know the politeness of. You know, being royalty to the other royal family while they're on their turf, maybe so. But I think it's a little deeper than that, y'all. Y'all got the, y'all got to let me know what y'all think about that, man. And remember, Kanye West in a, another video about a video two a back ago uh, of mine. Um, Kanye mentioned the Medici family. You know what I'm saying? Medici family. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, it's a little bit. You know, something to look into. That's all. 
Something to make your mind wonder. That is. <laughs> That's right, King Selassie. Okay, you getting there. Okay, you are getting there. Now let's move forward so you understand how that works. Okay, so you understand how that works. This is King Selassie. Do you remember the picture I showed you? The fro? Let me bring it back to the Medici. Let me bring Medici back. You looking at this picture real good now. And look at this. Do you see where this going? <laughs> okay. This is, is another, this is his bloodline, his lineage. Now pay attention. His name is what? Selassie. You know what cousin is? Medici. You know what other cousin? Orsini. <laughs> let me let me keep on moving. Let me keep on moving. We ain't stopping because y'all need to get this because it's very important. Now understand. They love to say, oh, the whitey is in charge. Oh, look at this and look at that. But every time you hear the whitey, people need to understand. Whitey means the corporations of today. Remember, what you call United States is a corporation that we are indigenous people agree to discharge the debt of these indentured servants that actually get the green light from Morocco. Morocco was the first to agree to say, okay, these whitey people can stay in America and we're not going to ask them to pay the debt back. We can discharge the debt. So Morocco was the first to agree to discharge the debt for these indentured servants. And that's a fact. Now, I'm going I'm to I'm show you more. Wait a minute now, because I have to show you, because they love saying, oh, the white team's in charge. Now, understand, Morocco agreed for these indentured servants to govern themselves into a foreign land, which is our land, that we as indigenous people agree. That's why every single state have indigenous names. They couldn't change it to English name because that's our land, then they don't have jurisdictions over that. But since we agree for them to govern themselves, then they create a constitution so they can govern themselves here. Oh man, that, that, that one gonna start a lot of problems, man. It's gonna have some people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. They gonna, it's gonna have they, they, their feathers ruffled, you know? So, uh, hey, but the truth is the truth, man. Let's go. Okay, we gotta put our tinfoil hat back on for this one, y'all. This is weird. So I come across this post on my Twitter. Um, can someone please tell me what the F is going on in the background? Okay, photo number one. Boom. Look in the background. Get your full. Shit's getting weird. Photo number two. It's a little weirder. Hold on, let's zoom in. Mmm. This is weirder. Like, what's happening here? So I'm like, this is no way that this mm -hmm. is real. I'm gonna let me go to her page myself so that I can see if this is even real. Well, I'll be doggone. It's really on her page, March 16th. Y'all see that right there? And I'm zooming in myself so that y'all can see. Like, this is a real photo on her page. Look at that one. What in the reptilian hell is going on? What? Need somebody to explain to me like I'm three years old why America's Got Talent has shapeshifters in the audience. And if these aren't shapeshifters, then what the hell is it? And why would someone, especially a host of America's Got Talent, be editing faces in the background of her photos? This is not April Fool's. This was posted on March 16th. It's on her page right now. Somebody tell me, because for those of you who are so good at refuting conspiracies, Give me an answer for this in the comments. Thank you. So I got a theory for y'all and a question, quite question. Kind of like a question in the theory, but uh, <clears throat> what would y'all do? Like you see that clip, everybody in the background, famous that you know, even the main one in the middle, in the front screen, front row. What would y'all do if you found out every which one of those, or every one of those people in there were lizard people Riz real life reptilian lizard people shape shifting lizard slash mask wearing lizards you know what I'm saying what would you do if you found that out 
yeah, the, it, the world will seem a lot more spookier to you, right? But like they say, truth is more stranger than fiction, man. And uh, it's time for us to uh, awaken. And we're trying to find out why the police aren't getting the support of the city leaders. Very quickly, your response. Hmm. Well, and the officer that just, just talked to Andrew Schroeder was just named Minneapolis Police Officer of the Year for this past year for all the great work that he has okay. done. Okay, so, so y'all... Again, I think in, unless you can hear directly from uh, the officers themselves, pupils? you're going to start Reptilian. to see some filters and you're... Really uh and y'all gonna act like y'all didn't see that. You gonna act like you didn't just see what I just seen. Man, you got to be crazy, man. I know you seen that. Man. We, like I said earlier, live in a frequency band, a band of frequency. Um, anything beyond that frequency, we can't see, we're not aware of. And, you know, uh, people have no trouble accepting that the old analog system of radio and television stations um, are different frequencies sharing the same space without interfering with each other unless they're really close on the dial. You know, the analog system, BBC One and ITV and CNN, they're sharing the same space, but they're just on different frequencies. And the, um, the television picks up different frequencies as you change the channel. Well, in the same way, worlds uh, of, or realities, it's a better term, are sharing the same space without interfering with each other unless they're very close on the dial. And, and at, at that point where they're close on the dial and, 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 and there is some form of interaction, that's what we call ghosts and paranormal activity. Um, and so these, not just reptilian but other non-human entities, are operating just outside of the human sight. And um, they have to have vehicles within our frequency band, within our world, that represent their interests that um, are basically vehicles for them to manipulate our society. Go David or White. What y'all think about that? Y'all believe them or what? Let me know. Let me know. My name is Alex Yef and I'm the curator and custodian of the Maryland Cryptid Collection, an extensive menagerie of extinct and unclassified preserved animal specimens, amongst them the supposed cadavers of creatures thought to be no more than myth. I was approached in 2007 to oversee the examination and documentation of Maryland's extensive diaries. Um, I work alongside a team of specialists whose job it is to examine each study case to ascertain the history um, and the historical significance, uh, the species and the research carried out by Marilyn and his colleagues. The collection was the life's work of Thomas Theodore Marilyn. Um, he was a wealthy naturalist born in 1782. He travelled alone extensively seeking out items and specimens to add to his to treasure trove. Um, his collection itself grew exponentially, uh, adding the preserved bodies of creatures that defied classification. Even into his late 80s, he continued to seek out elusive knowledge. Uh, despite his great age, he never appeared to be any older than 40 years old. His collection soon became the stuff of legend and he was all but f forgotten until 1942, um, when uh, a series of donations were made to an orphanage, including a London townhouse. And according to newspaper records, uh, the do donation came from Thomas Theodore Maryland. In 2006, the house was sold and was due for demolition. When the foundations were examined, a sealed room was found. Uh, within this space were thousands of wooden shipping containers. Uh, on closer inspection, the crates were found to contain biological specimens, and the entire contents was uh, moved from the cellar to a facility where it could be properly examined. I think I knew from the beginning that, the, uh, that they were all real, that it wasn't a hoax. 
um, I was presented with a, a wealth of information um, and all of these kind of self-contained studies of each species. The saving grace was, was Marilyn's attention to detail. He was fastidious, he recorded everything, um, he presented everything in a very matter-of-fact way. You had thousands of biological samples and, uh, and a wealth of, of annotated drawings. And, um, but I think the problem is that he spoke of ideas, uh, anachronisms, um, that, that kind of now looking back, they, you could doubt them. He was talking about DNA in the 1850s and obviously DNA wasn't discovered until much later than that. I was employed to examine a series of preserved animal cell samples, just told to analyse the samples and to record any interesting qualities. Although the cells appeared dead, they were in fact in a dormant state. I submerged them in a culture medium and managed to coax them back to life. These were 2,000 year old skin cells, the DNA like nothing I'd ever seen before. After I submitted my findings to my superiors, I was asked if the cells could have been fabricated or interfered with to create such qualities. I said no. It was then that I was told what species these cells had come from. And what species is that? Homo vampirus. I'm sorry? The vampire. Very, very. Take it easy.